What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Life family, a place where we learn God's word that builds our faith strong and transforms our life. You know, I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of uh, Realities by Pastor Chris. And today we're going to review the, one of uh, the articles from the devotional like we do. We're going to do a Bible study. We're going to learn God's word. So you're in for a treat. So don't be in a rush, you know, just stay where you are and just get ready for this. So the, today's title, we're talking about your true value defined. That's the title for the, uh, for the study. And our, uh, the scripture is from Romans, theme scripture is from Romans chapter 8 and verse, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 or 9. Let me read this one. It says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than be now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Oh, wow. That's a powerful scripture. This is, is showing your true value is being defined. This is amazing. Can you, can you say, well, but, but God commended his love to us. While we were sinning, we didn't even care about God, but he loved us. And the, the spiritual logic, this is a spiritual, you know, sometimes when you study the scriptures, you need to, this is, it's not human logic. You know, there's, there's portions of the scripture, especially if you are in epistles, when Paul will compare one thing to another. He said, if God did this, there's a principle, how much more than we are saved. If we were sinning, we didn't care about God, we didn't care about him, he died for us. Now he has saved us. Now we live with his kids. If he could love sinners that much, how much more now we are his kids, we are born of him. And that love for sinner was great that he didn't spare his son. How much more now we are being re- brought into union with him? This is a deeper love. And I don't get ahead myself. Let me just read the first paragraph of the devotional and then we can discuss this. It says, the Bible speaks of the Father's love poured lavishly in Jesus Christ. Such an extraordinary love did he express towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't die for us because we were living right. He did it while we were yet sinners. That is indescribable love because it describes our value. That is a, that's a measurement of value. Oh, now it makes sense because it is like saying, you know, when you're in school, they used to say, um, if, if, if they'll, they'll, do, they'll do like measurements, <laughs> they'll say, if you take like, um, I don't know, a bag of feathers, and then, then they would say, like, if you measure, uh, hold on, hold on, I don't, I don't confuse this. The point of the matter is, there was like a compare, there, there was a scale of comparison. Like, so they would say, there's like a metric system. Like, let's say you're saying you're using pounds, or if you're in the, in the, in the, in the UK or whatever, or, or any other country that you uses kilos, you know, there's like a defined metric system. Like, you measure stuff based on... There's a there's there's a there's a base level for measurements. Like so, maybe if you if you go to the US, they, they have ounces, they got pounds and ounces, and then maybe if you go to another country, uh, or different parts of Africa, especially, I think they still use the metric, the kilos and um, the grams, that type of thing. So there's like a defined measurement to determine value, right? So like if you have a bag of feathers, and then you'll be like, if you have a bag of feathers, and then that was a hundred kilos or a hundred pounds. And then you had a bag full of of of, of um, stones, a bag of a bag full of rocks. That's a hundred kilos. And then someone will say, "How much? Which one is much heavier? The bag that's full of feathers, that's a hundred kilos, or the bag that's full of stones, that's a hundred kilos?" And then what we like? This used to trip up a lot of people when you're growing up. You'd be like, "Oh, of course, the bag of stones is much heavier." And they be like, "No, it's the same weight." Because there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a base level of measurement. The point I'm trying to make is, God de- 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 uh, determined his measurement system. Because he, he, he died for us while we were sinning. He showed us his love. His love was demonstrated to us. His measurement of how far his love can go was shown. Because he didn't say, oh, no, 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 no. If they were good enough... My love can at least if they were a little bit better. Oh, let me show you this scripture. He said, if if they were a little bit nicer, maybe I would, I would send Jesus. Maybe I would die for them. But no, nah, no, nah, they just they're sinning. No, no, no. He determined the measurement of his love. There's a measurement of love. Love as a measurement. 
Oh, I'll show you that in a bit. Like that's like we said, the bag of feathers, bag of rock. Love actually has a measurement. So God determined how far can this love go. He didn't end this love and saying, "Oh man, let me just die for people that are being nice a little bit nicer." I mean, they didn't do bad things. No, his love went beyond the niceness. He went actually to the to the worst bunch, the the, the worst of the worst. The terrible sinners. I, I said, you can say, oh, no, no, but I was not that bad. No, every man has sinned. It's not about like your action. Sin is a nature. So he went and said, you know what? I'm not even going to wait for them to be nice or good. I'm just going to die. I'm, I'm going to love him while they're sinners. So he determined a measurement of how far this love can go. And then Paul says, if God could go that far for a sinner, now that we've been reunited with him, now that we're justified, how far can he go for people, to, for his kids now that he love? If his love was measured, he could go that distance for a sinner. Then, let me show you this scripture. So now we are, we are reunited with God. Oh, there's no, there's no depth. Now it makes, oh my God, this makes, <laughs> you know, like, I, like we, we study right now. The wisdom of God is being is being manifested because I'm learning the same way too. Because real God is ministering, it makes sense. You know, I used to read that scripture. I didn't understand. I never used to get an understanding. What does this scripture mean? I'm gonna show you this scripture. Let's go to the book of um. Uh, let us go to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter three. This scripture now has come alive. He has come alive in this. So Ephesians chapter three. How fucking God God's love go? If he went all the way and, and he plucked up a sinner, that's how deep he went. How much more now we are reunited with him? So, okay. So, from, from verse 17. Let's start from here. He says, That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the depth, the length, and the length, and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be full with the fullness of God he says do you, you you might be able to know with all sense comprehend the breath these are measurements these are measurements these are dimensions of love there's there's a breath there's a length these are all metrics of love there's a depth how deep can this love go how high can this love go? How far can it go? He went so far that he rescued a sinner and died for them. Now we are reunited with God. There's no, it is endless. His love for us is infinite. God cannot, cannot, because he established, he can go all the way for a sinner that he will send his son that will die for someone that doesn't even care about him. Now that you're born again as a Christian, oh my God, God's love for you is infinite. You can't, you, it is beyond the depth. It's beyond the life. Hmm. He says that you may know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. This love is beyond human logic. It is not logical love. You can't, it's, you, now I can say you can't understand it with a human mind. This is, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual insight. It's a spiritual revelation. Let's find another uh, translation. I'm, I'm getting too excited. Anyway, let's look at, um, Amplify. What does the Amplify say about this? You know, sometimes when you read the scriptures, always go, you know, try to look at different translations. They help clarify some scriptures, you know, just don't rely on one translation. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So he says, you mean root and deep and love. He says that you may have the power, be strong to apprehend and grasp it all sins. God's devoted people, the spirit. The experience of that love, what is the breadth, the length and height and depth of it? To experience that love. Hmm, okay, let's look at another translation. Oh, man, I'm, let's go to Common English Version. See what he does. Verse 17. Uh, from verse 17. Yeah, length, breadth. Okay, it's the same thing. Hold on a second. So yeah, I'm looking at this is the new living translation. Uh Ephesians chapter 3 in verse 17. It says, Then Christ will make home in will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will be grow will grow down in God's love and keep you strong. 
your roots will grow down in God's love and keep you strong. That you may you may have the power to understand, as 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 all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. How long? How high? How deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. <laughs> So your value, it is how far higher than the value of a sinner. Because God died for the sinner and sent his son. Now we have been reconciled with him. Oh, this is a greater love. Man, oh man. Okay, let's just keep on reading this. I don't want to take too much time. It says, when you, know who, when you know who Jesus is and the fact he actually gave his life to save you, you understand what God thinks about you, how he values you. His vicarious death defines your value. He thought you were worth his life. Therefore, he gave his life in your place. This shows you are, val you are as valuable to God as Jesus is. No wonder Jesus pouring out his heart to the Father in prayer, wanting the world to know that the Father loved us even as he loved him. That's in John 17, 23. He said, God, that you may know. I want, I'm praying for him that the world may know that you have loved me as you have loved him. God does not love us less. He loves us the same way he loves Christ. Because he, he sent his son. His life was given for us. That means his life is as valuable as our life. If you're someone who sacrificed their life for someone else, that means they, their life is worth our life. Because no one that just gives, oh man, no one just sacrifices their life for anybody. But this is beyond human logic. This is the, 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 It talks about the depth, the, the, the high, how high, how wide the love of God is. That he, he, we are valuable. That he will send his son to die on that cross with, with no, he didn't send no angels. He didn't send no prophets. He came down, he, he sent his son and he, crucif he was crucified on that cross so that we may live. That is how much valuable we are to God. We are not nothing. So this is this is another thing too. When um when you hear a lot of people say, Oh, we're nothing but sinners saved by grace. We are not sinners. This is an insult to God because we were sinners and he sent his son and he died for us, and then we were born again. When you're born again, you're not a sinner. You're, you're, not, you're not the sinner that was in. You know, oh no, we are just we are just God's servants, we are just nothing. We are what God's love. We are what God, this life of Jesus. We're not nothing. We are not servants. I mean, in an essence, you can say we are God's servants, but we are born of God. Oh. Man, oh man. Let me show you a scripture. Let me show you a scripture. A lot of scriptures is just popping out of my head. The Spirit of God is just showing me all these scriptures. I hope you got time. I don't want to take too much time today. But let's see if we can see one more scripture. So I'm reading the book of Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 verse 4. Let's start from verse 4. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. That love that God has for has been given to us. Oh man! So we said, He says, "For when we were without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly." What we didn't even care about Him. He died for the ungodly. And then it goes from verse seven: "For scarcely for a righteous man will one die." Yet, peradventure, for a good man, some will. You know what? Let me read a new. Let me get better translation. Let's go to the New Living. So, Romans chapter five. Let's start from verse six. If I can highlight this, you can see it better. He says, "When we were utterly helpless, Christ came just as the, at the right, just the right time, and died for us sinners." Now most people will not will not be willing to die for an upright person, though some someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. <laughs> Even people that it's like it's a people no one is even willing to die for someone that's been good. You say some if you, if you see someone that's a good person, say oh sacrifice your life for that good. He's a good man. Sacrifice your life. People be like yeah, I ain't doing that. Even someone that's really good at helping people, it's like no no no, you're about to do something for him. But if you offer your life for him, you'll be rescued. People be like nah, I'm good. <laughs> but he says from verse 8 but God showed showed his great love oh my god he showed his great love his love was demonstrated for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners and since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ 
he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his, of his son while we, were yet, while we were yet, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So we now rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God. Christ has made us friends. Let me read the King James Version. Because um, it says for, from verse 10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. When we were enemies, God died for us. Now we are no longer enemies. Oh my God, how fucking God go for us. How fucking this love go? Because when we were enemies, he sent his son. That was his best. Now, we are reconciled to him and his son live. How much more can God save us? If God could not spare anything to rescue a sinner, do you think he would spare anything to rescue you? Now you're born again. Now you're saved. You are valuable to God. Your value just went up like phew, when you were born again. Your value changed. You're not that sinner anymore. You say, oh, we were sinners. Christ died for us. Yeah, we were. But now you're born again. You're no longer that sinner. Now it's a different value system. He's comparing different. You were sinner. Anyway, I hope you're understanding it. It's a different metric. The metric, the, the value of the sinner, God went all the way to rescue the sinner. But now we are born again and he, he lives. There's no, there's no telling how far God will go for you and what you, what, what you mean for him. What you mean to him? <clears throat> Nothing can separate you from God. Mm, let me show you that scripture. So many scriptures today. All right, it's in Romans again. Oh, this is beautiful. This is amazing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So Romans chapter eight in verse thirty. Let's read on. It says, "Moreover, whom he predestinated, whom he predestinated, whom he predestinated, <laughs> I can't even say that word. Them he also called, whom he called." Them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That is the point. God is on our side. He's not against us. He says, if God is on our side, the battle is over. That's not even where we're going. From verse thirty-two, said, "He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all." How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He said he's, he didn't spare his son. He delivered him for us. Now we have been saved. We are born again. How will he not give, freely give us all things? I like that word. Freely. No payments. Well, you have to work to get God's blessing. You got you to gotta pray, pray, pray before God blesses you. No, he says how much more? How shall he not with him freely give us all things? All things have been given to you freely. Not some things. Freely give us all things. This is a logical debate. And then from verse 33. Who shall lay any anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who make us intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it, as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, no height, remember the, the, the dimensions of love, the breadth of love, the depth, no height, no depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It says nothing can separate us. It doesn't matter how far we are. It doesn't matter how far the problem, the pro we go, how deep we go. It's the love of God. We can comprehend how deep this love goes. How high this love goes. How wide this love goes. It says, no even angels can separate us from this love. Not, not life, not death, no principality, nothing to come, not the future, not the present. Nothing can separate us from God's love. That's how much valuable we are to Him. You are not nothing. Don't, you look in the mirror, the whole world is not even worth you. 
even in heavens, you, God, you have to understand. Oh man, I don't even. No, even not, not even angels. He says, not even angels or principalities are worth you. <laughs> Nothing can separate you from God's love. That's how much valuable you are. So people that will be like, oh my God, we, we worship angels. Uh, the, the scriptures kind of tells you your, your rank and your value, your, your value to God. Man, oh, we're running out of time. Let's let's finish this up. Okay, from let's keep on reading. It says, How inspiring it is to know that Jesus gave his life so that you may have it. Oh man, this is ah that life you ought to live now should be the life of the Son of God. Live his dream. Paul boldly declared in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, we live by the life of Christ. See, he died for us and he gave us his life. He says, the life now I live on the flesh is not the sinner's life I'm, uh, that, that was before I got born again. It's the life of Christ. Christ in me. He says, the life that I live on the flesh is the life of him. We have become one now. It's not our own life. He says, don't live a lesser life. Live God's dream. He considered you valuable, gave himself for you. That's First Peter 1, 18 to 19 says, For as much as we know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as, as silver and gold for your vain conversation received by the tradition from me, uh, fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of, of a lamb without blemish, without spot. By the precious blood of Christ. That's how much valuable you are. His life. And the life we live in the flesh. We don't live it no more the old life. We live by the, the faith of the Son of God who loved me. And he gave himself for me. Oh, man. Alrighty. Let's take this prayer together. Let's just, <clears throat> let's just pray. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say it out loud. Blessed Father. Thank you for your unfailing love. It surrounds me like a shield, and I saw in its comfort and bliss forever. This love compels me to preach the gospel to the lost and turn them from sin unto righteousness and from the power of Satan unto to God in Jesus' name. You can read further studies in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, 1 John 4, 8, 10, and you can follow a one-year Bible plan or two-year plan Pick whichever scriptures, whichever plan suits you. Thank you once again for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. You know, we learned a lot. I'm learned a lot. So, and if you're new to the family, welcome to the Shining Life family. We learn God's word here. So, if you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave me a like, a comment. I read all your comments. Thank you once again for your support. We're just making progress together. God is taking us to a different dimension a different level day by day. As we study God's word together, we grow in our faith and in the knowledge of God. And that's important. So thank you once again. I'm going to pray for you in a second. And before that, I want to pray. If you're not born again, I want to pray for you. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me lead you into this, into, into this prayer of salvation. So say this after me. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. As simple as that. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can build your faith and learn more of God's word. That's important. So I want to pray for all of you that are watching, that God's hand of blessing will be upon you. That you may experience the love of Christ, which surpasses every knowledge, which surpasses understanding. That you may walk in that love, you may experience that love. No matter what challenge or, 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 or whatever challenge or circumstances that you're facing, may the Lord grant you the victory. Because you are more than a conqueror. Nothing can separate you from Christ's love. You are a winner forever, a victor for all time. You can't lose. You are more than a conqueror. 
whatever you do will work and succeed. Christ is your life. The life that you live in the flesh, you live by the faith of the Son of God who loves you. And you're winning always. And God is moving you forward. He's making you make progress. You're advancing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen. Congratulations. It's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.